Hey guys, this is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. It was recommended to me by a friend who had read it and loved it. They were a fan of crime, but I thought that this one might work best, better for me in that it's supposed to have been a ode to the golden age of crime. Uh, with authors such as Agatha Christie, Raymond, the one who wrote The Sleep One, and Maltese Falcon. Anyway, so the Golden Age of Crime writers. But it didn't hit the mark for me. I ended up giving this three out of five stars. But let's first get into what the novel's about. The novel follows. Firstly, our main protagonist, Susan, who is the editor for Cloverleaf Books. Cloverleaf Books publishes a very well-known series called Atticus Pond, and Atticus is a very much like Poirot-like character. He is a major detective who is clever and solves crimes. And Atticus is a survivor of a concentration camp, so that adds a little extra nuance to his character. Um, and is one of the defining points that Alan wrote about. And so at the start of the novel, we are given the manuscript with the warning that it ruins Susan's weekend. And we don't know why, but we go straight into the manuscript and we read. And then the second half of the novel goes back to the present with Susan. While you're reading the manuscript, it's very much like you're a reader of an Agatha Christie Poirot, but in this case, it's an Atticus Pond. And those sections I quite enjoyed because I like that style of writing. I don't know why, it just appeals to me. I, I like the slowness of it, and that worked well. But when we went back to Susan's voice, I it just... It was almost too jarring for me. I did not want to go back to that modern way of, of speaking. I wanted to stay with the Attica style of speaking. And it doesn't help that my last novel that I read before this was Essex Serpent, which is also meandering in its prose. So that was the first thing that rubbed me the wrong way. The second thing that rubbed me the wrong way is that you're given the manuscript at the same time that you find out that the principal writer, Alan Conaway, died and that it was a suicide. There is a another mystery, a mystery of, you know, can you figure out what happened in Magpie Murders before the author tells you? There's that mystery there. Can you figure it out before Alan Conway tells you? And then there's the overriding mystery of a lot of the plot points in Magpie Murders are replicated in life and you get to solve those. I'm a person that solves mysteries reasonably well. I didn't get everything in this novel because I got very frustrated with it like a little bit more than halfway in but I solved the main mystery and it just seemed like a waste of time at that point because I'm not somebody who is that into just like straight word puzzles like I like words but I don't feel the need to search for words out of thin air if that makes sense and then I honestly thought that this novel was in a very silent way homophobic like it's not the homophobia that you can call out like people being like off oh, fucking gay people they suck like it's not that it's in its references of are the main character Alan Conway has a younger lover who's in his 20s whilst he's in his 40s and yes he left his family for that younger lover but you know not everybody figures their sexuality out at a young age it doesn't always work that way and instead of and I get it there's characters that can speak but this novel consistently has all the characters that speak through it saying negative things about gay people and like in the end they make like the gay characters detestable so I don't like that um, and going back to my first thought is that 
comparing that relationship of like 40 to 20 as pedophilia is not okay because there are so many there's a history of calling queer people pedophiles and that that's not okay like gay people can work with children and not have untoward thoughts that's just and that's like on so many levels it angers me so much so that already rubbed me the wrong way they never like straight out say anything that you can be like super calling out about it but that's already one thing that rubbed me the wrong way and then all the other characters that they that the novel interviews afterwards are always like saying things like I didn't have a problem with his sexuality but I was really uncomfortable and like it goes on and like it goes on to a point where like we understand you're uncomfortable and that's perfectly acceptable but like if you feel the need and I've done this myself with race issues if you feel the need to preface with something with like I'm not racist or I'm not homophobic you're probably about to say something that's going to offend someone and you should just not <laughs> um and the novel does that it does it multiple times I have all these examples that I want to read to you but I don't want to spoil this book because like everybody loves it for how witty it is and how like it drops little clues throughout the novel but like I could not get over these little moments that were just like braiding on me all right this is what i'm gonna read to you you can get a taste this is a modern writing i took out my iphone and moved away from the front door so that i could get a picture of the whole thing i didn't even know why i did that but then why does anyone take photographs ever we never look at them anymore i had driven past a large shrub it wasn't in the book and walking back, I noticed two tire tracks. Quite recently, when the grass was damp, a car had parked behind it. I took a picture of the tire tracks, not because they mean anything, but simply because I thought I should. I slipped the phone into my pocket, and I was walking back to the front door when it opened, and a man came out. I'd never met him, but I instantly knew who he was. I've mentioned that Alan was married. Shortly after the third book in the Atticus Pun series came out, so did Alan. He left his family for a young man called James Taylor, and by young I mean barely 20 at the time. When Alan himself was in his mid-40s with a son aged 12, his private life was no concern of mine, but I admit I was a little uneasy and worried about the effect it may have on the sales. The story was reported in quite a few newspapers, but fortunately this was 2009, and then journalists weren't able to sneer too much. Han's wife and his son moved to the West Country. They agreed terms very quickly. That was when Alan brought Abby Grosh, Abby Granch. So, I don't know, maybe I'm too sensitive, but it rubbed me the wrong way just the whole handling of the gay characters so you know and that was just too long that was just too long you can't even really figure out what page you were on because like once you get to the second part of the novel the page numbers start all over again that's supposed to like emulate that feeling of ooh mystery like you're in a new story but then you should have just numbered the first like three pages where the editor is talking to you before you have the manuscript and then go back you know that didn't even make sense I don't know it was not what I thought it would be but some people love it like Karen really loved it so you know give it a go if I were you though I'd stick with Agatha Christie yeah all right guys well I hope that you are doing well and that you're reading something that you enjoy and I'll talk to you later